deficiencies because it grew dependent on some of the stability or cushion that that shoe had, and it needs something else. It needs a different stimulus to just be able to do what I need it to be able to do. So, um, but almost probably the most frustrating things about shoe companies is, is that they do change, and sometimes mm -hmm. what they say is just a cosmetic change. It's it's a it's a night and day change, and and so again, being able to come into a place like this and try on different brands, different models. Um, people ask me all the time, they're like, so what do you think of this shoe? What do you think of that shoe? And and I tell them, you know, like if, if I weren't under contract with Ultra, I would probably at least try it on. At the very least, I would try it on. And it, I, I would wear whatever felt best to me regardless. Ultras feel good to me. Some Ultras feel good to me, and so they work. Some of them don't. And I, I if anyone asks me, I, I'm happy to tell them, like, no, I, that is a great shoe for that person. It, I hate it. Like, I... I, I <laughs> Some of them don't have as much wear on them uh, as the others. So, um, and I, I feel like I appreciate that Ultra lets me say that because, and I tell them that, <laughs> I'm like, dude, why did you ruin my favorite shoe? Um, <laughs> we had a good thing going there for a couple of years, and now this is not what we had. So, um, so uh, that being said, and um, kind of going back to some of what we were trying to talk about uh, the neutral talk. Um, Mal said that, you know, according to the research, about 80% of people are fine in a neutral shoe. And, and that is true, and that's, that's some of what kind of came out of Born to Run, and, and it, well, Born to Run mentioned that and popularized that idea. Um, I think they quoted Vin Lanana in that um, uh, from, from Stanford and Oregon, um, but, um, and Nike. Uh, but the, the truth is, it was pushing against a paradigm where the way that people used to sell shoes, especially the red stores, and it wasn't it wasn't malicious, but they'd come in and they they have you stand on a sheet and, and write you know s um, sketch around it, and and they show that you're pronating, you're going in, which is a natural thing for most of us, um, and then eighty percent of people were were encouraged to wear a shoe that actually had stability on the on the midsole. Um, and it's not that some of those people didn't need it. The Brooks Adrenaline is like one of the best selling shoes still, and has been basically since it came out. Um, and I think it's like on version 18 or 20 years. It's, it's, a, it's been out for a long time. And it's a, it's a good cushion and support shoe. Um, and it does have a little bit of medial support in it. Um, not as much as some others as the Brooks Beast. That's just like a tank that has, it's just like rock solid and doesn't move at all. Um, but again, most brands have those. So um, un unless that's the shoe that feels best to you, you probably don't have to have that. That being said, um, and this is probably going to end up on the interwebs, um, some of the models that I prefer for Ultra, they haven't had my size recently. And so I've had to wear shoes that are a little bit less supportive than I'd like, which has meant that I've actually <laughs> introduced some more support, like overly supportive models to compensate for that. So, um, for example, this is one of Ultra's top selling road shoes, um, and it's just a purely um, cushion shoe. It doesn't have additional stability, it's just foam. Comfortable, but sometimes if I'm going long, I feel like my knees are rolling in a little bit too much, and then my knees start hurting, and I can't have that. Like, <laughs> it doesn't just ruin my day, it kind of ruins my job. So, um, I started wearing these are the ones that I'm wearing right now to kind of compensate for that. And these ones don't necessarily have a built-in post like a lot of the traditional support shoes had. Which shoes are those? These are, these are called the Provision. Okay. Um, those are Escalantes? Uh, no? These are the Escalantes. Oh, okay. So these are, these are also a really popular shoe, but if you, you can see the difference between the two, this yeah. one is cut out a lot more in the arch. I love this shoe, but I usually only race or do workouts in this shoe. And this is the shoe that I get really nervous when people are like, oh, well, you wear that shoe, so I'm going to get that shoe, and I'm going I'm to start putting in 100 miles a week in that shoe. I was like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put in 100 miles a week in all 10 pairs of shoes. So, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't do that. So, so I wear this for a lot of my easy and recovery and sometimes my long, long runs. I really like this shoe because it has a combination of the, of the cushion and support. Which one is that? This is the Paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... It, I don't like it as much as some of their previous versions, but they're actually out of stock in this current version and all the previous versions, so that's the issue. Is that this is my jam. This is my go-to shoe on the road or treadmill. This is my go-to shoe on the Hanmore roads and <laughs> trails uh, or paths. 
Um, but uh, because they're out of both of those in my size, I've been doing a combination of like these two, um, which. I mean, so this is the provision and this is the Torian, I'm oh, sorry. So these are, okay. this isn't as popular a shoe because Ultra kind of philosophically is trying to not be part of that paradigm of like we're a support, but they also want to provide what people need. And so their form of stability addresses some of what Malk was talking about rather than one post form of posting. And, and I think Brooks is doing this and some of the others. They have pods, four pods throughout the shoe because it's, it's oscillation throughout the foot rather than just rolling inward it's it's that the foot itself is kind of moving and so it's just to address the movement in either direction yeah, yeah. you might have heard of a, a brand that's come from switzerland from zurich in the last like five years or so called on running or just on nice. um, and uh massively popular in the triathlon world mm -hmm. and uh, there you go so they use this cloud system here and they actually uh, they actually came to the university of calgary and uh mainly because ben O'Neill at university of swiss as well <laughs> so they get to just walk swiss but um, the idea here is quite simple, is that you put a lot of these different clouds, as they call them, that can deform, each one can deform individually. And because you have a lot of them under the foot, they don't connect um, rigidly, they connect very loosely. So what happens is if you deform this cloud here, it will have hardly any effect on clouds elsewhere in the shoe. So what that allows you to do is have deformation that can change around the shoe. And that comes back to this kind of model where we know that different parts of the foot want to do different things at the same time. So if you, that, that's their kind of way of dealing with that, is saying instead of having one rigid or one continuous amount of foam through the midsole, so if I deform here, it's going to have an effect over here. They wanted to get away from that. They wanted to segment the shoe, basically. So that's, that's a bit of why On did what they did. Yeah. Um, and same thing, I have athletes that wear On not knocking on, but I think they were on because Rich Roll er, pushes on on his podcast. Rich Roll's the man. I agree with some of his stances on life, um, but he, he, he does a really good job with his podcast. He's done some extraordinary things as an endurance athlete, but just because they work for or just because they sponsor his podcast doesn't mean that they're the best shoe for every single person. The best thing for people to do is to come and try them on and see if they work for them but not just, oh, well, Rich Roll endorses them, therefore they must be perfect for me. Uh, because for s some people that I have worked with, they're not. And in the same way that some people that I work with, that, that even though I discourage them from just buying whatever shoe I'm wearing, they see me wearing on Strava or whatever, they, they do, and then they, they don't work for them. And it, so you, it really is an individual thing. And just like um, we'll discuss with nutrition, it, it is a very individual thing. You've got to find what works for you, and all of our bodies are different. And, and like we said, sometimes they change and <laughs> adapt. Sometimes even our nutritional needs change, and in, and sometimes the our, the needs for our our um, our feet and the rest of our bodies change. How do we know if our shoe is more of a minimal one? I mean, is it is that where the millimeter drop and the weight and yeah, good you know, if question. we're gonna alternate, yeah. I don't know what mine yeah. is to know what I need to alternate with. Good question. Thank you. I should have started with that. So um, drop is a relatively new term in the shoe world as well. Uh, last decade, um, probably less than that actually. Um, so that's part of it. Um, Ultra is quote unquote a zero drop um, shoe, but they they have models that are still maximalist versus minimalist. So they would say that it's stack height. So it's, it's the number of millimeters of cushion in total. And so they would say that it's uniformly the same number of millimeters here in the heel and in the four or in the mid or yeah forefoot. Um, some of their models do curl up and, and they're obviously not the same number of millimeters in, as cushion. Um, so the way I have these separated is these are trail and these are road and they're starting at the more minimal or performance level and going out. Um, and even in the Ultra lineup, which is a relatively small company, they, they have probably three times this many models. These are just the models that I had in the garage that I've been rotating through right now. So um, so how you know is, is, stack, uh, is stack height, not just drop. So um, this one has uh, high 20s in millimeters. And then some of these, I mean, this one can't be more than like eight, six or eight millimeters. This is a cross-country flat.